Amy Garcia and J.B. Smooth. I think y'all are gonna love this next story. I'm very excited about it. I'm, I'm all about recycling, just doing what I can, um, but this is crazy. Lots of major cities make it nearly impossible to recycle glass. It's either not available curbside or collection places are hours away, which nobody's got time for that. That's exactly what was going on in New Orleans until our next guest decided to step up. Now, not only have they recycled more than 2.5 million pounds of glass, <laughs> they're using the recycled glass to help improve the community that makes them rad humans. All right, from, I love this, the name of this, from Glass Half Full, let's say hi to Max and Fran, everybody. It's amazing to meet you two. Beat everybody, meet Amy, meet JB. Hey, What's hey. up? Hey. We're just bringing people together. Okay, so <laughs> this all started, which makes us friends already, over a glass of wine. <laughs> this idea like, was cultivated while y'all were having wine one night, right? Yep. Yeah, so like most uh, good ideas, most crazy ideas, it started over a bottle of wine. Um, <laughs> we <Wow>. were... <laughs> I love that you didn't glass. say glass. No, no, no. It's a bottle. That kind of day. Yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, we were college seniors at the time, so about two years ago, I was studying international development and Fran was studying chemical engineering and we're sitting around kind of lamenting about our consumption and that by all likelihood that glass bottle was probably gonna go to the landfill. Um, and we thought, hey, why not us? Uh, instead of contributing to the problem, maybe we could try to solve it. Yeah. Uh, and we broke out the computers, started doing our research um, and we realized, yeah, we could take this glass waste and turn it into something that actually benefits our community over and over and over again. Uh, so we launched a GoFundMe and the local paper picked it up and we ended up raising $20,000 and were able to buy our first glass pulverizing machine and bring it to our college backyard. I just love that you own a glass pulverizing machine. Like, <laughs> oh, that's no. so fun. That's the first one. Like, it seems so fun. So, and everything's kind of blown up, right? Yes, so as you can see, we thought it would be really small, this like pet project. I mean, we started in a backyard and then suddenly the glass just started coming and it kept coming. And so we had to move into a smaller warehouse and then eventually into our current facility, which is 40,000 square feet. Wow. We're recycling Jeez. thousands of thousands of bottles a week. We're averaging about 150,000 pounds a month of, of recycling this glass. And it's just grown so much bigger than we ever expected. Because y'all work with restaurants. You work with people that usually dispose of a lot of waste, right? Exactly. We have residential customers um, that we pick up the glass from. We also go to casinos, hotels, bars. And then, of course, we have a free option where anyone can participate to keep that program accessible. Yeah, oh, it's just so cool. So I love, so you, you break the glass down, it becomes like this sand, right? And so how does that help the community tell everybody? I'm so excited for them to know. <laughs> yeah, for Thank sure. So hurricanes and flooding are obviously top of mind for anyone living in New Orleans, anyone living on the coast for that matter. So we take that glass sand, pulverize it into a really, really fine size, which is super absorbent. And then we uh, fill sandbags with, those, with that sand and Folks from, a, from around the city, from around the state, use those sandbags to protect their homes, their businesses from flooding. Um, so we're already making a, a dent in, uh, you know, preparing and preparing against disasters. But our ultimate goal was always to try and restore the Louisiana coastland. Uh, Louisiana loses about a football field's worth of land every 100 minutes due to coastal erosion. So again, really, really top of mind. And when we realized that we could actually solve that issue and take that glass waste and use it as sand to combat those problems because we don't have enough sand to combat the erosion crisis. You're building uh, it back up. It's crazy. Yeah, we're build, building it back up. You know, we, we jumped into action and haven't looked back since then. It's so cool. Do y'all, are you into like helping combat like climate change? I know that you, do you and your wife have garden? Oh, grow yeah, your own? yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we, we have a uh, vertical gardens called uh, LA Urban Gardens. It's like a hydroponic. Uh, mm -hmm. Garden is absolutely the most amazing thing ever. Um, we are vegans, yes, and to walk out your home and go to your own little garden and cut up what you need and cook what you need yeah. instead of getting in your car and driving to the supermarket, stuff you don't need, but to have it there is the most amazing thing in the world. It's so cool. Yeah. But this ripple effect that you're doing is so huge and so cool and innovative. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. I love it. Thank you. So what's, what's next for y'all? 
So, like I said, we've seen so much demand for glass recycling that the next step is hopefully building out a new facility that's capable of recycling all of the glass mm -hmm. in the Gulf South region um, and then making a dent in our coastal erosion issues. That's amazing. Thank you. I mean, who would have thought you could do I never even thought of that. Well, if you're unsure of what the recycling restrictions are where you live, check your city's website.